I was, my mom had died and my dad died seven months later. And I was laying on the couch and I saw these two big angels come in the room, staying up there. You know, I kind of like trembled. And then Donald knocked on the door that next day and he came up and his face was like a light bulb. I knew he had been in the presence of the Lord. I said, Donald, what did the Lord tell you? I know. I couldn't hardly look at him. It was so bright. He said, he told me that all, don't drink and don't smoke no more. I said, thank you, Lord. I went to shout and I was all happy, grabbed my husband and everything. Well, he started drinking and smoking again. Then he had to go have that balloon put in him. I went through that with him. Still trying to get him right, telling him about the Lord. Donald, two weeks after he come out the hospital, he hadn't drank or hadn't smoked. All he was doing was shooting pool because he was retired. And Donald, hey Don, and Donald came in there one day. Him and his friend had been playing pool. There was the best pool sharks in the city. And Donald, he was an ex-social worker too. And Donald came in there and Donald told me, he said, uh, uh, I just had a few, baby. I, and I looked at him and I said, you mean to tell me you went and drank and you got a balloon in your chest? And he got all nervous and did like, and I thought he was going to hit me. I don't know where this came from. I said, you raise your hand and hit me and I know some judo. My husband was six feet four. Well, he was still weak, he had just had the surgery. Honey, I grabbed that big man and I lift my leg all around that man's ankle like that and I knocked him to the floor. And when I knocked him to the floor, I did the elbow thing in his neck. And when I looked in his face, the big long arms are stretched out like that. When I looked down in his face, I said, Lord Jesus, this man gonna kill me. I realized I had to put him on the floor, I'm dead. I jumped up off him and I ran to the back and I locked myself up in the bathroom and I tried to prop everything. <laughs> I could next to the bathroom door. I said, Lord Jesus, this man going to kill me, Lord. I, I thought this man was going to hit me or something, you know. And I done knocked this big, I don't know how it happened. He hit the floor. I wrapped him and he just lost control. And he can't, I could hear his footprints come, his footsteps. And I just said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And when he came back there, he was laughing. He said, woman, you stone crazy, Ness. I tell you, you nothing. And he called me Elliot Ness, whatever that meant. He said I was untouchable, and he left the house. My heart calmed down. Now nah, you say, oh, you would tell that on television. Yes, that happened. I mean, look, I was so angry. I was screaming at him, and the man put his arm up. I thought he was going to hit me. I didn't know. I thought he had turned to be one of them violent men. I didn't know. And so, Jesus got a rod for you. He got a rod that's going to eat up all your enemies, and his rod is called a rod of salvation. You give your heart to Jesus, and you're going to knock that big six feet four devil off that ground, and you're going to lock up, they're going to walk away from you. If God be for you, who can be against you? Can't nobody be against you when Jesus is for you. Nobody. You know, the bamboo seed, the bamboo tree, well, you put the bamboo seed down in the ground, and it won't grow. For five years. And in five years, it begin to grow every 24 hours till it gets something like about 80 or 90 feet tall, I heard. Maybe I have it off. But I'm telling you right now, you may have been around doing all your dirty work for years and years. But Jesus plants you in the ground. You're one of his. He made you turn on this set. It is not by accident you turned me on. And he had planted you to hear this thing. And I'm telling you from this day forth, you can grow. You can grow in the word of God. You can rise up and be somebody. You can get your life straight. Set your family free. A lot of you all, you are millionaires. And sin is holding you back. Jesus got a lot of millionaires out there. Some of them is in a drug culture. They're trying to make money one way because that was planted in them to be a millionaire. But that ain't the way. The way is with Jesus. He'll make it easier for you. I'm telling you, he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll be with you to the end of time because he loves you. All he want to do is put his word in your heart. Put it in your mind. Put it in your soul. He wants you to walk with him. He wants you to talk with him. He wants you to be with him on a daily basis. God is good. And nothing will stop your success. 
Nothing. I don't care what you go through. I don't care what it look like. I don't care how deep it look, how wide it is, how tall, how narrow, how broad. I'm here to tell you God will make a way for you. Jesus loves you. He loves you with an unconditional love. Can't nobody love like Jesus. Your mother can't love you like Jesus. God gave her the love she had to love you. So you know it come from a greater one. You know, a lot of you people, you think all they want is money. And let me get you straight. Oh, we had cops, I pay nothing, but another channel I do. And you can't run it without it. But people want your soul. You got to get that to God. That part of it you got to give to God. You got to believe God for your needs. That's just like in a house. A uh, mother, let me tell you, uh, who was it? Brother Shambach. Brother Shambach said one day they had been hungry for days, him and his little sisters and brothers. And his mama had been praying and praying. And she said, set the table. And they set the table. And you know what? They kept waiting and waiting. And finally, somebody knocked on the door and said, here, Ms. Shambach, we had a, a banquet, and we got all these chickens and all this food, and we brought it to you. God going to take care of you. And always remember, no matter what, it is not who made the concrete in your lives, but it's who holds the contract. And Jesus Christ, he is the contract holder of your life. He'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you. He'll be with you till the end of time. Play that record, Larry. Some people say they want to hear a little more of it. God bless you. One day I was dying.